When a binary search tree has left and right subtrees that look alike, that's our best case. Finding an item in that tree is order log of n. But if we were to enter the letters a through g into a binary search tree in that order, we'd end up with everything on the right hand side and we'd have the worst case which is a linear search, order n. For best performance, we always want our trees to be balanced. Let's look at this tree. It isn't the best case either. It's slightly heavy on the right subtrees. It isn't as bad as the one where everything's on the right, but it's not as good as a perfectly balanced tree. That leads to the question, how do we quantify how balanced a tree or subtree is? The definition is the balance factor. Every node has a balance factor defined as the height of this left subtree minus the height of its right subtree. So in this case, the node L has a balance factor of negative 1. A tree or subtree is in balance if its root has a balance factor of negative 1, 0, or 1. That is, the heights on the left and the right differ by at most 1. Leaf nodes have a balance factor of 0. They have no left or right subtrees. The nodes L and S have a balance factor of negative 1. And again, the subtree whose root is L is balanced. The left and right subtrees have a height difference of at most 1. The root node of the tree has a balance factor of negative 2, so it's out of balance. Two researchers named Georgi adelson velsky and Yevgeny Landis came up with an algorithm that makes sure that a tree is always in balance for best performance. Let's see how their algorithm works. We'll start with an unbalanced tree. It has a balance factor of negative 2 and it's heavy to the right. We can bring it into balance by rotating the root node to the left. The right child becomes the root node and the former root becomes the left child of that new root node. But how do we do that last step? The former root becomes the left child of the new root if the new root already has a left child. We know that the former root no longer has a right child. We detached that link already. So we'll do two steps. Step A will make the former root the left child of the new root. And step B, the right node will become what used to be the left node of the new root. This is not the only case that we can have. Here's another tree that's right heavy. It has a balance factor of negative 2. But when we do our left rotation, we end up with a left heavy tree. How did this happen? What's the difference between these two right heavy trees? The answer is in the subtree of the right child. In our first case, which worked, the right subtree was also right heavy. In the problematic case, the right subtree is left heavy. To solve this problem, we'll rotate the right subtree to the right. Now you may be asking, how will that make things more balanced? It won't. We will still have a right heavy tree, but now both the root and the right subtree are right heavy, and we know how to solve that. That's exactly the same process as we did before. To recap, here's a single left rotation, which we use when both the root and its right child are right heavy. And you might want to convince yourselves, by the way, that where A and B end up still preserve the binary search tree property. And here's a diagram that shows how the double rotation works when there are subtrees on all the nodes. For symmetry, when you have a left heavy root with a left heavy subtree, a single rotation to the right will bring the tree back into balance. If you have a left heavy root with a right heavy subtree, you'll need to do a double rotation. 
you need to rotate the subtree to the left, which will make both the root and its subtree left heavy. And then you've got the previous case where a right rotation of the root will rebalance the tree. And that is the AVL algorithm for making sure that your binary search trees perform well by always being in balance.